I've got a robot mounted and I've installed the RCX340 controller and I have Chris Elston with YRG Inc. to give us a few tips on installing our system. Okay, Tim, so uh, we're taking a look at your installation and your work, your uh, handyman work here. Um, so this is our RCX controller. What's really nice about our controller is it's a universal controller, so each of the axes can be customized. And in this case, for a 500 XGL, we have different amperages here on the side. So we can see we've removed the, uh, the side cover here, which protects the uh, absolute batteries for each of the axes. So down in here, you can see that's how... Uh, we back up the position when the power is off and the robot remembers its position. Those are those batteries there. They normally last about uh, one to two years, depending, um, you know, how, how often the power is off. And we can see that this robot is set up for 20 amps, 10 amps, 5 amps, and 10 amps. So the maximum would be 20, 20, 20, 20. And, uh, and, and depending on the, the, the robot configuration depends on how much amperage or KVA rating, and what that and what that does is that plays into our electrical design. So you've already uh, selected the uh, circuit, the circuit breaker, and fuse sizing for um, this particular nameplate here shows us at 6.5 amps being the maximum. Um, there is a KVA rating on that uh, for this particular robot, which then also um, plays into heat. And I noticed that. Uh, you have a little bit of tightness here, I think, Tim? I do. So if you look up here, this is not meet YRG's requirement for spacing. And if you look in their installation manual, they will have it here. Now, this is a demo trainer that we are using in our training center. So it doesn't run as often as most applications. And also, we are in a very nice air-conditioned environment here. Yeah, and that's one of the nice things is Yamaha does have a built-in uh, fan that's powered, and they flow air through the controller to keep it nice and cool, even when we have a tight situation like this. So I think you're going to be just fine for um, this particular application. But if we are running 100% duty cycle, we want to give it um, the best airflow possible on there. So um, other features of the controller is uh, we have a dual uh, dual safety channel, so an A and a B channel. So you can do Category 3 or Category 4 uh, safety wiring. Um, this is a dongle when you are not using a teach pendant. Uh, one of the nice things about the Yamaha controller is you can run it pendantless. And most people choose this option where they don't have a teach pendant installed, but you still need this dummy plug in there because if you have a teach pendant installed, there is a physical hardware e-stop, and that's what that's doing is jumpering that out. So optionally, uh, we do offer a teach pendant for the controller. Most robots do. Um, this this teach pendant plugs into that that port that we had earlier, and as you can see, it does have a physical twist to release e stop. Uh, most of the time, maintenance guys prefer to use a teach pendant to jog it around because the tactile feature of it is just very instantaneous. When as a controls engineer, typically we just use our laptop to do the programming, or just even a PLC and a panel view. Kind of over here in this side, um, you'll notice that uh, when this controller was ordered, it was ordered with Ethernet IP. Of course, there's other options like Profinet and CC Link IE and uh, and and also uh, EtherCAD IO. Okay, and so this is our Ethernet IP card. Uh, you'll probably notice that it has two ports, which means that it does support DLR. Uh, and DLR is the device level ring topology, the like the for for setting that up. And then this is the uh, programming port here, and you'll notice that it does have a COM port, a traditional COM port, which comes in handy if you're trying to do some serial things. Uh, maybe you have a serial camera or a printer or a barcode reader that's uh, still old school RS-232. Uh, you could actually um, interface this way, or you can program to the, 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 the 232 port. Uh, this is our Ethernet cable, and uh, the USB port is primarily used for firmware updates only. And then the three other spots here allow us to add additional cards, such as conveyor tracking cards, maybe an electric gripper card can go in here, or maybe even a physical digital I.O. card here as well. Now, why did I need two Ethernet cables? So we have two different IP addresses here. One here is for programming or configuration of it, um, and then this other one here is dedicated for the PLC uh, field bus connection right there. And since we we have the DLR, we could have plugged this one into here, 
But in our case, we are we have some really cool diagnostic features that we're going to be doing videos on on our Ethernet switch. All right, what else is in there? Yeah, oh, that's pretty much it, Tim. I think you uh, got it all wrapped up, and uh, you're ready to have some fun with this robot. I think we're ready to power this up, and let's go ahead and connect to it. And we've created this playlist right here to help you out with that.